Hi, I'm Peter Nybor from Sensel, and I'm here to show some of the highlights of the Sensel app. That's sort of your hub, your gateway for configuring the device, for updating the firmware, as well as redefining what the controls do on all of these overlays. We're going to dive in deeper for each overlay and some of the interesting things you can do with the Sensel app. So right now, I have the Sensel app open. I have no overlay loaded. This is as if you were going to open it for the first time. You may see a tutorial when you first open it that has some helpful hints that tells you a little bit about the interface and gives you an option to read more online using our guide. Now as you can see, there's no overlays here. The first thing we see is the morph itself. It has a little information about the identity of the morph, the serial number, current firmware version, which is helpful for support, and we can also update the firmware. We see we have the little red update flag, so I'm going to go ahead and update the firmware. You will not want to disconnect your morph during this process, and it's going to go ahead and update the Bluetooth firmware as well as the standard firmware for the morph. This will incorporate any new features that we've included, and this is something you should do the first time you get your morph because there's a good chance that we've improved the firmware since you bought it and received it. The LEDs on the morph indicate progress for the firmware update, and once it's finished, we go back to where we started, except as you can see, the update firmware flag is gone. So now that I'm ready to roll, I'm going to go ahead and add an overlay. I'll try the music production overlay. And we'll need to use the button down here, add overlay, select the type, and it shows up with the default music production map. You'll notice there are what look like duplicates. The second version is the MIDI polyphonic expression, or MPE version of the overlay map. These MPE versions make it easy to switch from standard MIDI to MPE MIDI, but we'll cover the details of MPE in a separate video. As you can see, it shows all the assignments. We can select any control, and it gives us opportunities to modify the data that the controller will send. You can modify the controls and create new maps, and these will all show up here in the side next to the overlay's name. You can also go ahead and import maps, duplicate maps, so you can create a copy of what you have. To show an example of importing, I'm going to go ahead and import a map that we got from our forum, which adds all the MPE controls for the music production overlay. You can see it's been added here in music production MPE. There's a bullet next to the music production map. That means this map has been sent or flashed to the morph. If I want to load this imported MPE map, I have to go ahead and press send map to morph. Now it's sending the map, and this is now loaded with the MPE controls. I can go back to the original and make that the map that's on the morph. It's important to note that only one of these maps can be loaded on the morph at any time. This list just represents maps you have created on your computer that you can send to the morph. Anytime I make a change, for example, if I want to modify this button to send a key command, I can go ahead and select the keyboard type and select the key that I want to send. I want to make it do the save key, so I'll go ahead and find the letter S, that would be 22, and I'm going to make it Command S by ticking this box. I can require more force on the button by raising the threshold. If it's less sensitive, I won't accidentally save with a light brush of the button. Now that I made this alteration, it's yellow, I can send map to morph. Now whatever application I'm working in, if I press this, it's going to save my changes. Now you can see, this is now a hybrid of a keyboard and MIDI controller, which is pretty slick. The Sensel app actually has a built-in piano, so you can listen to any notes that you have applied. So if I want to go ahead and change this so it outputs note A4, we'll hear that when I send the map to the morph. Now we've altered the scale. Now let's say we want to change one of these pads to be more of a controller rather than something that triggers a note. I'll go ahead and select MPE, and if I want to, I can assign a note to it. I don't really want to do that because I just want to be able to send controller data when I move my finger around on it. So I'll make pressure send continuous controller 1. And on X, I'll send 2. And on Y, send CC3. And I want extra high resolution, so I'm going to click the 14-bit CC values, though it is rare to find synthesizers that use this. Absolute position means that it's going to send a value corresponding to the coordinates of where I push it. I can make it relative 
so to be a relative where I push on the map, meaning the center lands where I first contact, not the physical center of the control. I'm going to keep it absolute. I can also set the pitch bend range for the control and change how much force it takes to send a note. So I'm going to go ahead and send the map to Morph, and we can take a look in a convenient application called MIDI Monitor. The Sensil Morph is selected. And now you can see as I move my finger around, it's sending controller information that could be used to modify sounds, videos, or even lighting. Maybe another example I can show you is making a gaming controller turn into a MIDI controller. This shows the versatility of using the Sensil app as well as the versatility of the Morph in general. So I can go ahead and add the overlay, select the gaming overlay, and let's say I want to turn this into an MPE controller that I can use to modify synthesizer values. And again, I can make this send different continuous controller values on MIDI channels. And I'll make that absolute. I'll go ahead and send map to morph. I did not click the 14-bit values, so it's a standard MIDI resolution. And I can go ahead and see that as I wiggle my finger around here, I'm sending controllers 1, 2, and 3 at different values. That should be pretty cool for modifying a synthesizer. I can also set these controls to be MIDI notes. So I would just like the standard MIDI note, and I'll send it on channel 1. I'll also set the note value, which is C-2, maybe a bit low. I'll send C-0, which corresponds to MIDI note number 24. I'm not going to send any after pressure value, though I could send a continuous controller that would send as I push down on it after the note. And again, I can send map to morph. And we can take a look at MIDI monitor. You can see I'm sending note 24. I can use that in MIDI Learn, in any MIDI software, and to control synthesizer values or mixing values such as mute or solo. And then again, this is still acting as a controller for my synthesizer. Let's say you want to modify the video editing overlay to work with Final Cut Pro instead of Premiere. Now obviously there's a lot of controls here, and I'm not going to map everything out, but I'll give you an idea of what you can do. First, I'm going to go ahead and add the overlay to my system. Select Video Editing. And what I'm going to do is change the selection and Razor. Now Selection in Premiere is V, and Razor is C. In Final Cut Pro, Selection is A, and Razor is B. So I can make those assignments pretty easily. I'll go ahead and select the Selection button, and change that from V to A. And similarly, for the Razor, I'm going to go ahead and change that from C to B. Send map to morph. And now it's easy enough to verify in our toolbar in Final Cut Pro. If I press these buttons, it's changing from the selection to the razor tools. One other great feature in the Sensil app is the visualizer. This gives us an ability to just look at the bare values in a visual way and see how sensitive the morph can be. The device itself is an array of over 20,000 pressure sensors. And these pressure sensors are very finely tuned so that they can detect the lightest touch as well as really hard hits. As I lightly touch, you can see that it's picking up my contacts and showing information on the screen. As I increase the pressure, the spikes get higher. And I can change the pressure on all my fingers and get a sense of how big those changes are according to the device. This is a nice way to test out if you're using the API and get an idea of what your pressure values look like. Plus, it just looks really cool. These were just a few examples to give you an idea of what you can do with the Sensil app and the Morph. There are many more ideas and modifications to experiment with for working with a huge variety of creative software in imaginative ways.